Hello, and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 7a. This is the first of two tutorials focused on accounting for bonds. This particular tutorial will focus at accounting for bonds that are sold at a discount. This tutorial has three learning objectives. The first will be to review accounting for bonds sold at a discount using the effective interest rate method. The second learning objective will be to review and apply present value concepts applicable to bonds. And third, to prepare any required journal entries from the perspective of the bond issuer. This tutorial is based on the Steinbrenner Inc. example, so please make sure that you download the correct file and review the data and requirements before proceeding. We will start with requirement one that has a series of sub requirements uh, essentially to record journal entries. So we're going to record the journal entries for Steinbrenner, assuming the bonds were sold at the yield of 6% and then later redeemed at 102. We're going to have to record the sale of the bonds on March 31st, 2021, an interest payment on September 30th, an interest accrual at the intervening year end of November 30th, another interest payment on March 31st, 2022, and then the final early redemption on April 1st, 2025. So it looks like a lot, but this will actually go fairly quickly. So let's begin with the bond amortization table. It's important to note that in this case, the bonds were issued on April 1st, 2020. Now that's important because the bonds were not actually sold until March 31st, 2021. So a whole year later, and two payments have passed. So notice what I've done here is I've prepared this amortization schedule with a total of 20 payments, except the first two payments did not exist because the bonds were not issued until a year later. That means the remaining number of payments is 18. So what we can do is calculate the present value of the bond on the date that the bonds are sold using 18N, 3% interest, because the yield is 6%, but don't forget we have to divide by two. We have a $140,000 payment and a $7 million face value or future value for these bonds. And again, two payments are gone because of when they were issued. And the payment is the same at 140,000 each payment. The other date worth noticing here, we can get this out of the way in one shot, is the redemption that happens on April 1st, 2025. But that's the same thing as the balance at March 31st, 2025. Following this through, there would be 10 payments left. So if we recomputed with 10N, we should get the same present value here of 6,402,886. Then 40% of those are redeemed. So we're going to have to make sure that we account for 40% of those redemptions. And so we're going to need this number later, 2,561,154. That's the value of the bonds that are redeemed in 2025. Let's go ahead with our first journal entry in requirement A to record the sale of the bonds on March 31st, 2021. Now, what I've done here is I've just included on April 1st, 2020, no entry because the bonds are issued, not sold. And so there's that two-year gap. To record the sale of the bonds on March 31st, 2021, we simply debit cash and credit the bond payable for the present value as previously calculated, 18 periods, 3% interest, 140,000 payment, and 7 million future value. The next requirement will be to record the interest payment on September 30th. On that date, we will debit interest expense. We'll credit cash for 140,000. And this is based on the face rate of interest. The interest expense is based on the yield rate of interest, which will take the balance in the account of 6,037,254 times 6%, which is a full uh, year's yield rate divided by two, or you can use 3% alternatively if you like. And that gives us a value of 181,118, which is the same as the value that is in the table. So debit interest expense, 181,118. And then the adjustment necessary to make this balance, we need a credit to the bond payable account of $41,118. It's a credit because we're going to have to take existing credit balance in the account of $6,037,254 and bring it up to the $7 million. Our next requirement, C, will be to record the interest accrual at the end of the year on November 30th, 2021. 
To do that, we're going to have a standard entry to debit our interest expense, but instead of crediting cash, we're going to credit a bond payable account, and the amount of the bond payable is going to be the $140,000 normal payment times two over six months. Remember, the last payment was September 30th. So from September, the next month is October, and then November. So this includes the two months inclusive to determine how much interest will be expensed. The amount of the payment that will have to be recorded is two over six months of the $140,000 payment, which is 46667 the interest expense is calculated as the existing balance after the previous credit of the bond discount amortization. So if we take 6037254 and add 41118, that's going to give us the 6078372. That's in the amortization table. And that times 6% divided by 2, and then multiply by 2 over 6 months, right, to compensate for this two months, so that's two over six, means 60,784. Then the rest of that to make the journal entry balance is going to be 14,117. The next entry will be to record the next interest payment on December 31st, 2022. The easiest one there is cash, credit cash for $140,000. Done. Now, after we've set up this interest accrual, so our interest payable has a balance here of 46667, which we must get rid of. So let's immediately debit the interest payable for 46667 and that'll wipe it out. The interest expense will be the remaining 4 over 6 of the previous calculation, so our 6078372 times 6% divided by 2 or 3% times 4 over 6 is 121,567, and the balance to make the journal entry balance will be 28,234. Our next entry is going to be the redemption on April 1st, 2025. So that takes us all the way down here. The easiest one on this one is typically cash. The company is going to pay cash calculated as follows. You have a thousand bonds that have a $7,000 face value, 40% of which are being redeemed, and they're being redeemed at 102. So 102 means 102% of their face value. So 40% would be the face value of the bond. So a 1,000 bonds so $7 million, 40% of that is 2,800,000, but they're being sold at 102% of the face value. So that's where this comes from. So the cash will be credited $2,856,000. The bond payable is going to be, now you remember in the amortization table where I said at the time of redemption, we take the balance in that account and multiply by the amount redeemed. If we were to recalculate, if you, it's, if you want to do these types of problems without an amortization table, which is highly recommended because you can waste a lot of time doing a table, is simply to recalculate based on the number of payments left. So 10N, 3 IY, 140,000 payment, and 7 million future value times 40% is the value of the bonds that are being redeemed. 2,561,154 is what gets debited to the bond account. And the balance to make the journal entry work out is going to be, in this case, a debit of 294,846. And because it's a debit, that's a loss on the redemption of bonds. The remaining 60% of these bonds that are left will carry forward and continue to be accounted for as normal. Okay, so now it's time to review some key points to remember. First, bonds are not always sold on the date that they're issued. So in this example, the date the bonds were sold a year after they were issued. You're going to record the bonds at their present value of any future cash flows based on the remaining number of payments. And if the present value is less than the face value, you have a discount, and if the present value is greater than the face value, then you'll have a premium, and we will see this in the next tutorial. Be sure that you accrue partial interest expense at an intervening year end, as we did here. So we had two months transpire after the last interest payment date. So from September 30th, October and November are two full months to the end of the fiscal year. So two over six months was recorded. When you have an early redemption, just go ahead and recalculate the PV of the bonds just based on the remaining number of payments. So there's nothing fancy you have to do. Usually you have the calculations from the present value computation in your calculator. You just replace the number of periods.
the difference between the bond carrying value at the time of redemption and any cash paid it is going to be your gain or loss on redemption. And after that, you'll continue to account for any remaining unredeemed bonds as normal. So in our example here, 40% of the bonds redeemed, 60% of those bonds would continue to be calculated. Uh, interest expense would be calculated the same way using the same interest rates, just now on a smaller balance. In addition, IFRS requires the uh, use of the effective interest rate method to amortize any bond premiums or discounts, whereas ASPE allows a choice between the effective interest rate and the straight line methods to amortize any premiums or discounts. Although the effective interest rate method is usually preferred. In our cases, or usually for most courses, you can assume the effective rate interest approach unless you're directed otherwise. This concludes tutorial 7a. We hope you found it useful. Please proceed to tutorial 7b now to review accounting for bonds that are sold at a premium.